Last time I did a 3S LiPo test, I pitted five 3S 5200 milliamp hour LiPos against one another. I started off with the Avonic, the Tindling, the Huvu, and the RC Power. All four of these batteries performed similarly and provided more than their claim capacity overall. However, much of that capacity was not usable in a high demand RC vehicle like my Arma Big Rock. I was only able to get less than half of the total capacity of those four batteries usable in my Arma Big Rock. And the reason for that is the vol low voltage shutoffs at 3.4 volts. And when running it in a high load situation like in grass, there's voltage drop in all four of these batteries, very significant. So instead of going down to 3.4 volts and shutting off, the voltage drop is so severe, it shuts off around 3.7 volts. So when I tested those four batteries from 3.7 volts per cell up to a full charge, they only held about 2,400 to 2,500 milliamp hours. So not a whole lot of their claimed 5,200 milliamp hour capacity is usable in a high demand situation. I thought that's just the way a lot of inexpensive lipos were until I tested the Saipom battery. When I tested the Saipom battery, it held about 4,500 milliamp hours from 11.1 .1 volts or 3.7 volts per cell up to a full charge at 12.6 volts. So it nearly had double the usable capacity in that range where you need it most. And when I tested it, the voltage drop was less. It went all the way down to 3.6 volts before triggering a low voltage shut off in my Armour Big Rock. And the uh, capacity that I tested on my charger was backed up when I did a high load test in the field where I ran the Armour Big Rock in grass. The other four batteries all died in about two and a half minutes. Whereas the Saipom lasted, oh, over four minutes. So nearly double the time. Today I have a brand new battery I'm gonna test made by SMC. They boast these batteries are the best at their price point. They're a moderate priced battery, a little more expensive than these other five, but still not very expensive. And I've seen amazing reviews on these batteries. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the video description of a spreadsheet that really goes into detail how this battery competes against batteries that are much more expensive than it and does very well. And I also will put in the video description a link to a really nice video that has um, data on this battery compared to cheaper batteries or batteries that don't perform as well. Really good information. But at any rate, SMC, they claim their batteries are 100% made of LCO, lithium cobalt oxide. And that allows them to have better performance than much of their competition, which uses a blend of LCO and cheaper materials that don't perform as well. One way you can tell, or a good way to tell, if the battery is 100% LCO is looking at its weight. A lighter battery, the same specs, will typically have a blend of different components that will perform not as well as a battery that's 100% LCO, like the SMC batteries are. At any rate, I don't wanna get ahead of myself. I'm gonna go ahead and test these batteries. Like last time, I'm gonna compile all the data in the spreadsheet. We're gonna look at the total capacity. We're gonna look at the usable capacity from um, 3.7 volts to 4.2 volts per cell, which is the same as 11.1 .1 volts up to 12.6 volts. We're gonna look at the top speed of my Traxxas Bandit and compare this battery to the ones I've tested before. We're gonna do the field test where I drive my Arma Big Rock through a grass field and see how long it lasts before it triggers the low voltage shut off. I'll reset to ESC, go again, see how much longer it goes. Again, the original four batteries only lasted about two minutes, 30 seconds total. The Saipom was over four minutes. I expect this to be around four minutes as well because when I've been charging it, it's actually performed a little better than the Saipom did. I'm gonna run today both the Saipom and the SMC and one of the other uh, batteries did not perform as well to compare the conditions today to when I tested it before. 
Additionally, I'll look at internal resistance. I'll look at the weight of the batteries. And um, there's probably a few other things I'm forgetting in my spreadsheet, but we're gonna look at all the same parameters I tested last time and see how this battery performs. Now, when I do this field test, again, I'm gonna run some of the batteries I ran last time to make sure the field conditions have not changed. Now my driving style with each pass and things like that will induce some variation into this test. So 10 or 15 seconds difference between the different batteries is insignificant. What we're looking for is, you know, a minute or two minutes like last time. Four of the batteries are all very similar within about 15 seconds of one another, whereas the Saipom ran nearly twice as long or two minutes longer than the other batteries. And that's a very clear result that it performs much better with a high load, under high load conditions than the other batteries did. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and stop talking. I'm gonna go ahead, get started, do the testing. One other thing I forgot to mention though is I'll also look at the voltage after running it in the high demand grass test to see how much the voltage has dropped. Some of the batteries before, the ones that did not perform as well, um, were only at 3.7 volts when the test was done, leaving a lot of capacity on the table. Whereas the SIPOM went down to 3.6 volts. So the lower the voltage is when they shut off, the better performance it is because the voltage is not dropping as far if it gets closer to that 3.4 volt shut off in the Armour Big Rock. So while the battery, when it rests, it recovers and will go back up to 3.7 or 3.6 volts, depending on which battery I'm testing, the, uh, lower, the closer we get to the 3.4, the better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. All right, first up is the SMC. I'm gonna try to run this consistent with how I did the test before, but again, I'm gonna run some of the batteries I ran last time to make sure there's not a big variability in the conditions of the field or how I'm driving it. I'll go ahead and set the stopwatch and go ahead and we'll start now. Thing is really really quick. I'm gonna turn it around, get back on it. Just gotta be careful not to flip it. Ease back the full throttle. Turn around. We're at four minutes now. Last time out, the SIPOM went four minutes, 20 seconds. I reset the ESC and it went for another five seconds. We're over five minutes now and still going. All right, there we go. We just cut off at about 624. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the ESC and see how much longer it runs. Now the high performance batteries like the SIPOM, I think are gonna barely run any longer after I reset the ESC because they're much closer to the low voltage shutoff and there's not as much voltage sag. So I'll probably get a couple of seconds more run out of this. Whereas the lower end batteries, that have a lot of voltage sag, I was getting 20 to 30 seconds more runtime after I reset the ESC. But I'm just resetting the ESC to make sure that, you know, there's no issues with uh, over temperature that shut it down or anything like that. All right, it's reset. Let me reset my stopwatch. It's cleared out and I'll go ahead and start the timer. Probably only get a few seconds. All right, that's it. We got two or three seconds more. Now I'm gonna go ahead and test the voltage of this pack. All right, 
There's our SMC. And I'll go ahead and hook up my voltage checker. And all right, we're at 10.3 total, 3.45. 3.46, 3.48. So nice even at distribution. And the battery is, see how warm it is. It's pretty warm, but not hot. Uh, it's probably about 75 degrees out right now. The motor is probably cooking. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to cool down and then I'm gonna put the next battery in and test it out. I'll probably go with the uh, RC power next and then we'll go ahead and try out the Saipom. Excellent results for the SMC. This thing ran forever and used up almost all of its capacity. It probably burned up close to 5,000 milliamp hours. And when I'm doing this test, this is averaging about 60 amp draw. I calculated it out and it's using about 100, I'm sorry, it's using about 1,000 milliamp hours per minute which makes sense uh, and that's why the lower capacity or lower performance batteries only last a little over two minutes because I'm only getting about 24 2500 milliamp hours of usable capacity out of those batteries all right next up we'll go with the RC power next up we have the RC power last time out it ran about two minutes and I think it was six or seven seconds Reset to ESC, it went another 20 or 30 seconds. At the end of the run, the voltage was at about 3.68, give or take. All the data is in the spreadsheet, so you can refer back to that if you want to know exactly what it was. And we'll see if we get similar run times this time out. I'm going to go ahead and restart the stopwatch. And we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to run a similar path. Now this RC power battery is run it, rated at 100C, but as most of us know, the C ratings of these batteries are really made up and they just stamp whatever they want to on the batteries. Uh, this one ran no longer than some of the other batteries that were 50 and 80C. And the Saipom was only rated at 35C and ran almost twice as long as any, other, uh, any of the other batteries. The um, SMC is rated at 135. The company has no problem admitting they just put that number on there so that they uh, are in line with other companies' fictitious numbers. But the bottom line is, is how, the how these uh, batteries perform. And as we can see, or as we will see, the SMC did really well. All right, that's it. We're at about 324, we'll call it. So it ran longer than last time. The grass must not be quite as gnarly as it was last time. But the uh, SMC, I can't remember its exact time, it ran nearly twice as long. What's gonna be interesting is to see how long the Saipom lasts. It may actually end up being similar to the SMC. I reset the ESC and I'll reset my stopwatch and we'll go ahead and run it to see how much. We gotta reset it again. All right, we're gonna start at nine seconds. All right, that's it at 25. So what's that, about 14 seconds or so? Add it on to the time before. I'll put the total time in the spreadsheet, but the take home message is it was way under the SMC and probably a little more than half. I am really curious to see how long the Saipom will run, however. I'm gonna go ahead now and 
check the voltage and see how low it is. All right, there's the RC power. And let's throw on the low voltage checker. All right. It ran a little deeper, a little lower this time, probably because there was less draw on it. Total voltage 10.9, cells 3.65, 3.66, 3.63. And it is, see how warm it is? Pretty similar to the uh, SMC, despite the MSC running a lot longer. Let this cool down for a couple minutes and then I'll go ahead and try out the side palm. I'm gonna go ahead and restart my timer. And I always take a few seconds off the total time to account for how long it takes me to reset the timer. We're about four minutes in now. All right, that's it. At about, we'll go with 555 for that one. I'm gonna go ahead and reset the ESC and see how much longer it goes. All right, I restarted the stopwatch and here we go. I only get another three or four seconds. All right, it's done. So yeah, similar to the SMC. So it did run a little shorter by about uh, 25 to 30 seconds, which probably just enough to say there's a small performance edge to the SMC. All right, we're gonna go ahead and test the voltage of the side pump. I run it upside down just because it's a soft case and it fits a little, um, it's a little hard to fit it in here. All right. So the side palm. is a little low and triggered my low voltage alarm but it ran down pretty close this time to the same voltage as the SMC again I think there was a little less grass this time the grass wasn't as thick this time so there wasn't quite as much load on the cars last time and uh, I think that's why we're seeing these different times and voltages all right i'm back out here at the speed run spot with the traxxas bandit bxl originally i was talking about taking the higher performance batteries changing the pinion gear back to stock the 26 tooth pinion in here and running them to compare them to the data i had before on the four lower performance batteries however as i thought about it more i thought it made more sense to take those four batteries and run them in the higher demand setup here that goes over 70 miles an hour with the 35 tooth pinion gear. It'll draw more amps and it should show, um, give a better representation of how good the performance of all these batteries are. It's another nice morning, very similar conditions to last weekend, minimal wind out here. And we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Just for review, the SMC did about 76 miles an hour. The Saipom did about 75. I expect these to be a bit slower, but there's only one way to find out. We'll go ahead and get started on the testing. All right, I have the GPS cleared out. And first up is the Huvu.
All right, the Hulu hit 72.4 miles an hour. Next up, we'll go with the Avonic. And there's the Hulu. Ran off the road, darn it. Way down there too. We'll do a couple more runs in the Avonic. At least one more up and back. Hopefully I can keep it on the road this time. All right, could we beat 71.2 in the Avonic? Nope, looks like that's it. For the Avonic. And next up, we'll run the Tindling. The Tindling hit 71.1 miles an hour. So very close to the Avonic. Which was the case with other testing I did with a different size pinion gear in there. So that's not a shock. Last up will be the RC Power. I tested the RC Power out here the other day. Recently, the RC Power has had a problem with the cells bouncing. So two of the cells are only getting up to about 4.15 volts fully charged. So that's not encouraging, but we'll see how it performs today. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the tindling out and put the RC Power in. All right, and the final battery for today is the RC Power. Let's see what it can do. And the RC Power, again, was the fastest of the original four that I had tested at 73.4 miles an hour. So despite it having issues with the cells, not quite bouncing all right, it was still pretty quick. I'll go ahead and test the final voltages on the batteries just to see how the spread looks at least on this RC power the others have always uh, bounced well so there's really no point in testing that all right so we have 11.7 total 3.96 3.92 3.90 so despite it not quite reaching full charge in two of the cells it looks like after it's running, they're pretty well balanced. So that's, that's good. And uh, certainly the performance didn't seem to suffer much or any at all from that balance issue. I will have the exact speeds laid out in the spreadsheet at the end of the video, but the approximate speeds 
and the Traxxas Bandit VXL for the six batteries tested are as follows. The SMC hit 76, the SIPOM hit 75, RC Power hit about 73, Hubu hit a little over 72, and Tindling and Ovonic were around 71. All right, we're gonna move on to the next part of the testing. Well, I've been trying to finish up this 3S battery shootout for a while now, but COVID's been running through my family and really messing me up. But at any rate, I'm gonna try to finish it up tonight. Now, when I did the uh, grass high draw, high amp, high load test the other day, I was really kind of dejected because the grass in the summertime had kind of thinned out and it really wasn't putting a load on these batteries like it did the last time I did the test in the spring. So I wasn't really able to compare the results very well. I was able to estimate it and the uh, SMC and the SIPOM were similar uh, and ran you know, nearly twice as long as what the other four batteries would have run. However, it wasn't quite an apples and apples comparison. So in the spreadsheet, I'll make a note of that. And the um, time for the SMC is an estimate, but I think it's a pretty close estimate to what it would have run under the older conditions. And I was giving it some thought and I was like, you know what? As I was running this big rock in my backyard, trying to run some of these batteries down after doing speed tests in the Bandit because they were still fairly charged, it was dying pretty quickly. And some of the batteries like this Ovonic here were actually running out of charge. Some of the batteries were triggering the high voltage alarm I had in the car at about 3.8 volts per cell and this was set to 3.4 volts. So they were sagging like 0.4 volts per cell, which is huge. And it's not to say the four batteries, the Avonic, Tindling, Huvu, and RC Power are bad. They all meet their claim capacity. Actually all of them exceed it, and they even have more capacity than the SMC or SIPOM overall. The problem is it's not usable, especially in a high draw situation. So whereas the SMC and SIPOM may be able to go close to 3.4 volts, these others are closer to 3.8 volts. So all that capacity that could be utilized between 3.4 and 3.8 volts, give or take, isn't there, it's not usable. So a battery like this might only have about 2000 milliamp hours of usable capacity, whereas the SIPOM and the SMC may have say 4000 milliamp hours of usable capacity. Enough talking, we'll go ahead and try it out. Again, this is my backyard. The yard's in need of um, being mowed, but I'm gonna just do some loops, get on it, put as much load as I can on these batteries, and when the alarm goes off, I'll uh, see what the voltage is at. The closer to 3.4 volts per cell, the better in this test. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, one more note. These batteries, none of them are fully charged. I didn't want them fully charged. I want them to alarm without too much driving because it is hard on the truck driving it through tall grass. The only good thing is it's cool tonight. It's only about 65 degrees out right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and we'll see how this turns out. All right, first up is the Avonic. It's running just under four volts per cell. And I think it's gonna shut off above 3.8 volts per cell. But we'll go ahead and see what actually happens. So what I'm trying to do is just give this a real hard load as I accelerate full throttle in this tall grass. And once that thing starts alarming, I'll drive it back over here and we'll see what voltage is that.
I forgot I actually left this set to 3.3 volts and not 3.4 volts. But the ESC is set to 3.4 volts. So it went down to about 3.7 volts per cell, which is very similar to the tall grass test I did several months ago. So we'll keep this, we'll use this. And the Avonic uh, ran down to about 11 volts. Next up, we'll do the Huvu. That's it for the poo boo. And the final voltage in the hoo boo is very similar to the Ovonic 3.65, 3.67, 3.65, 10.9 total. Next up, I'll run the RC power. Okay, the RC power is starting off with a voltage of 12. All right. All right, that's it for the RC power. And the RC power ran a little deeper. 10.9 volts overall, 3.64, 3.65, and 3.63 volts. Next up will be the tindling. All right, the tindling starting off at a voltage of 11.9. Tindling shut off at 11.1, 3.73, 3.75, 3.73. Next up is the side palm. I have to mount it upside down in here because it's a soft case. So the side palm is at about 3.85 volts per cell or 11.5 overall. I'm starting this one lower intentionally because it will run deeper and we'll see how low it can go. Might be 3.6 or 3.5. Uh, let's see what it does. Quick voltage check, we're at about 3.65 volts per cell. So this is about where most of the others shut down. But I think we're gonna keep going for a while longer. All right, that's it for the side palm. About 10.6 volts, 3.61, 3.59, 3 3.46. One of those cells really dipped, which is not ideal. The next battery up, and the final one is the SMC. Okay, the SMC is a starting voltage of 11.3, and the cells are around 3.8 or just under 3.8 volts per cell. We'll see how low it goes. Okay, and the final voltage in the SMC 10.4 
3.48, 3.51. I will note this voltage checker is slightly different than my charger as far as the voltages it registers. This will show a little more discrepancy between the cells. We're talking one or two hundredths, so very minimal, but um, just wanted to mention that. At any rate, the SMC easily top the other five batteries. The SIPOM top the uh, four other budget batteries. And, um, you know, I've, I'm very impressed by this SMC battery. It's worked flawlessly in this big rock and in my bandit. And the SIPOM's not too far off from it. Definitely the, the closest amongst the um, other five, but the SMC is doing the best in this test. All right, so again, here's the lineup. Huvu, Ovonic, RC Power, Tindling, Psypom, SMC. As you can see, the C ratings, they're all nonsensical. Uh, the manufacturers pretty much slap whatever they want on there. And SMC, the guys there are extremely knowledgeable and they were telling me how their uh, C rating is, um, you know, comparable with a lot of other manufacturers. They put an inflated number on there just so that their batteries aren't rated lower than the others. And it's clearly a higher C rated battery because it has way less voltage sag than the others. The SIPOM actually is probably pretty close to its true C rating. They're the only ones that don't fudge things a bit. But as far as capacity goes, you know, these four lower performance batteries, it's not to say they're outright bad. If you had an RC vehicle, it didn't need a lot of um, ability to supply burst power, something that doesn't draw a lot of amps. These four would be fine, and they would actually run a long time, as long as you're not drawing a lot of amps where they, the voltage sags uh, because they're not getting their, all their usable capacity. And again, most of their capacity is down in the lower voltage range. So kind of a you know double negative there not only do they have less capacity up top where it really counts uh, the voltage sag is greater so you get down into that lower voltage range more quickly I've said it before all four of these exceeded their capacity claims it's just not accessible for high performance vehicles now most people that run 3s want high performance but if you had some low amp draw you know maybe a slow crawler or, or something that didn't demand high performance. These four would be just fine. They've worked well in my testing, but the SIPOM and SMC are clearly um, many levels above these other four for high demand, high amp draw situations. And the SMC is definitely crowned the winner of this battery shootout. I'll go into the spreadsheet now and go over all the stats of all six of these batteries. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the data from the testing. As you can see, all six 3S batteries are listed on the spreadsheet. Just so happens they're basically in the order of what I would rank, rank them for performance, uh, Ovonic down to SMC. So you can see again, they're all the same rated capacity. The uh, C rating of the batteries vary. Um, I went into more detail on that earlier on, but take all of them with a grain of salt. Um, but clearly the SMC and SIPOM had the highest C ratings with the SIPOM uh, trailing the SMC by a bit. The total measured capacity, all of them were near or above their rated capacity. Interestingly, the SIPOM and the SMC were both slightly under their rated capacity. Although I do recall SMC indicating plus or minus 5%, so it's within that window. But the other batteries were well above their claimed ratings, but that really doesn't matter because what's important is the actual usable capacity. And in my Big Rock and even in the Bandit, any brushless RC vehicle is going to have you know, a decent amount of draw to it. Only so much of the capacity of the first four batteries is going to be in the usable range. And if you look from 3.7 volts, to 4.2 volts. That's where the uh, shutoff was in the Big Rock was around 3.7 volts in these lower batteries. So I was only getting about 
23 to 2500 milliamp hours of usable capacity in those batteries. Whereas the SIPOM and the SMC had about 45 to 4600 milliamp hours in that range. But when I ran the SIPOM and SMC, they actually ran deeper down to like 3.4 or 3.6 volts, depending on the battery. So even more than this 45 or 4600 milliamp hour battery capacity was available during my testing. In the case of the SMC, it may have been closer to 5000 milliamp hours. But as you can see here, uh, I split the percent of charge that was above and below um, storage capacity. So as you can see, the SIPOM and SMC has most of their charge up in the usable range. Again, above 3.8 volts per cell, they both had over 3,000 milliamp hours, whereas the other four were below 2,000. So if you had a low draw RC vehicle, the uh, first four batteries, you know, you might be happy with them. And they do perform well, they just don't last as long and they aren't quite as fast. Um, the difference is mainly in the run times, however. So in talking about the run times of the various batteries, this column here is the high load grass test I did out in an area adjacent to a football field. And the first time I did it in the spring, the grass was thicker. And the first four batteries were all about two minutes and 15 seconds to a little less than that before they hit the low voltage shutoff in my Arma Big Rock. And I'd reset it and then see how much longer they'd go after it was reset, just to make sure it wasn't a thermal issue. And none of these tests did I ever run into a thermal issue with the Arma Big Rock. So again, they were all a little over two minutes. And the SIPOM I tested under the same conditions and lasted approximately twice as long at four minutes, 20 seconds. Now I went to replicate this test, but the grass had burned up a bit in the summertime and it wasn't comparable. This um, green column here is the RC power. I used that as a control. And as you can see, it went three minutes, 24 seconds this time. The SIPOM went close to six minutes and the SMC went almost six and a half minutes. So I estimated what the SMC would have run uh, had it run in the original conditions. It was about four minutes and 50 seconds. So again, you can see the SMC and SIPOM lasted significantly longer than any of the original four batteries I tested. Now, after I was done the um, grass run, I tested the voltage and the batteries that went deeper into their voltage range did not have as much voltage sag. So the first four were pretty similar. Um, but then the SIPOM was better. However, I will note that I'm having an issue with the voltage spreading when it's being discharged. And that's not a good sign. Um, I don't know what's causing that, but it did it on two different tests that I ran. Um, one was the grass test that was by the football field and the other was the one I did in my backyard. And in both cases, the voltage was um, spreading. So I'm not sure what that's all about. But as you can see, the SIPOM outperformed the first four batteries. The RC power was kind of a little closer to the SIPOM in this category, but overall was more similar to the first four batteries. So when I did this test, I was pretty annoyed because the grass was shorter that I couldn't really get a direct comparison. And what I did is in my backyard, I have some pretty thick grass. So I wanted to get something closer to the original test I did where the, the draw on the uh, ESC was high, about a um, thousand milliamp hours per minute or so, instead of uh, closer to 800 milliamp hours is what I calculated for the more recent test I did by the football field. At any rate, the um, test I did in my backyard, which is the backyard grass load run here. So you can see the voltages of the first four, you know, we're all in the same ballpark. Again, the RC power ran a little deeper, suggesting it performed slightly better. And the SIPOM went deeper, close to 3.6 volts per cell, except this one cell that really sagged for some reason. Now the SMC went to about 3.5 volts per cell. So again, not only was it able to go deeper showing it had less voltage sag, because it went deeper, it's able to access more of its capacity. 
so it has more capacity in the usable range and it goes deeper. So both of those add up to tremendously longer run times. The next column here is, was the voltage even amongst the different cells? And originally they were all yes. This time the SIPOM is starting to have some voltage spread and it's something I'm gonna keep an eye on. Um, it, I'll get into the price later and perhaps that's a factor, but uh, it's, again, something I wanna keep an eye on. Now the internal resistance of all these batteries the first four were, were similar. Higher resistance typically indicates that the battery is not going to perform as well, and that was reflected in the testing. The SIPOM and the SMC had the lowest internal resistance, also had the highest performance. The SMC edged out the SIPOM slightly, however my charger's not that precise, so it's barely worth mentioning. The next column has the number of times that the battery has been charged. None of these batteries are old and most of them are pretty new with the Avonic being the oldest and you can see the rest of them are, are listed there. Now the measured weight of the batteries, um, the first four were fairly similar with the Hubu being a little lighter. Typically heavier batteries are going to perform better. Uh, a heavier battery tends to have more LCO or lithium cobalt oxide in the battery and SMC boasts that their batteries were 100% LCO. So at 418 grams, it was clearly the heaviest battery here. Now the SIPOM was close to the other batteries in weight on the higher end of those. However, it was a soft case battery. So if it was a hard case, it would be a little heavier. Now one thing I found a little peculiar is on SIPOM's webpage, the batteries listed significantly lighter. I think it was 368 grams plus or minus they had like 15 grams. And I don't know if that means they're sourcing batteries from different suppliers or why there'd be a spread like that. Um, not saying this is the case, but it's possible that the performance of the batteries could vary if the weight's varying like that from maybe one supplier to another. I don't know. As far as top speed and the Traxxas Bandit VXL, the Ovonic and Tindling were close at just over 71 miles an hour. The Huvu was 72.4 miles an hour. RC Power, 73.4 miles an hour. The SIPOM was just under 75 miles an hour. And the SMC uh, was strong at 76.2 miles an hour. Previously when I did this test, I had a different pinion gear and they were all running around 60 miles an hour. And the RC Power was stronger than the first four and then the SIPOM edged it out, just like we're seeing here. But I wanted to run the bigger pinion gear because it would put more load on the Bandit. And I was thinking it may separate batteries to perform better from not as well, more than if I ran the stock pinion gear. And as you can see, there's, there's a clear difference in performance, at the top speed that's available with these different batteries. And in my opinion, five miles an hour is very significant. Um, as are the much longer run times that can be had with the uh, SMC and also with the SIPOM. Now the last category is the price. All of these batteries prices are from Amazon except the SMC which is not available anywhere except directly through SMC. The prices on Amazon will vary but all the batteries were roughly $30 a piece when I put together this spreadsheet. Now the SIPOM was two for $50, which is an absolute steal. I don't quite understand how they're selling the batteries that cheap. Um, the only issue though is it's almost impossible to find them in stock. SIPOM is currently sold out of almost all their batteries and they might have one or two of the uh, 3S5200 batteries in stock right now, but they're very hard to get a hold of. And I don't know if that price will creep up over time or, or what's going on there. But the SMC, yes, it's more expensive. It's more of a, I would consider it instead of a budget battery, a, a medium price battery. But for what you're getting, there's very strong value in my opinion. At $43, um, you know, it clearly won this competition, had the longest run time, the highest top speed the least amount of voltage sag, the lowest internal resistance. Their claims were backed up by my testing. Speaking of claims, 
SMC has a video on their webpage, which I'll link in the video description, where they tested some of their batteries against many other manufacturers. And it showed the same thing, that their batteries at their price point are amazing performers. And, you know, you can buy these cheaper batteries and for bashing around, you might be happy. You know, I, I was perfectly happy until I started running them in my big rock and the run times were so short. But, you know, they provided good performance. Um, however, I didn't know what I was missing until I started running the Saipom. And then when I ran the SMC, um, you know, that extra top speed, if you're doing speed runs, is really important. If you have an even higher draw RC vehicle than I'm running, the, the performance gap would be even bigger. So, you know, you got to look at the pros and cons as far as the, the price versus performance looks. But I also suspect that the SMC will hold up well over time. Some of these others, I'm not as confident in how they'll hold up over time. I can't say definitively that's the case because I have no experience to draw on. None of these batteries are old enough to say for sure, but I get a little uneasy when I start seeing voltage spread and you know things like that might suggest that the batteries might not hold up as well over time. Now, while the SMC is $43, the shipping is, I wanna say it's about $12 to my home. So you're looking at closer to $55 for the batteries. So you're paying about twice as much as the other batteries, but I don't know if I was to buy these batteries to my own money now, I think I would go with the SMC out of these six because it performed really well. I say that the Saipom is an amazing value, however, so I'd be kind of torn between the two, but if you want a quality battery that you know is going to perform well and likely it's going to hold up over time, and also as an American-based company. SMC, um, they're really good. One other thing I'm gonna link to in the video description is there's some independent testing done of a bunch of different 6S batteries. And that's actually what made me become interested in SMC to begin with. Because SMC, they were very competitive to batteries that cost two or three times what they cost. So, when I saw that, I was like, wow, these SMC batteries look like they perform very strongly. And there were a few budget batteries sprinkled in there, which didn't test quite as well. Um, it, it's geared towards airplanes, but it's definitely worth a look at. And SMC was a strong performer. And, you know, my testing is not, I'm not going to claim, I'm not going to claim my testing is the most scientific. Uh, however, it, it provides clear results. I have no reason to believe the results that SMC provided on our website were nothing but accurate. And, uh, you know, it was done more scientifically than my testing methods, but mine clearly back up what they tested. And uh, again, I'm very impressed with the SMC battery. As you can see, there's a couple of notes at the bottom of the spreadsheet. Uh, if you see a star, that indicates an estimated value. So that's the four minutes, 50 seconds here. Um, when running in the Grass, 10 to 15 seconds is probably within the um, window of variability for the test method. So, you know, a different paths through the grass or accelerating differently and braking differently uh, throughout the test could induce some variability run to run. So, again, don't get too held up on the, you know, 10 or 15 seconds different. But when you have batteries that are lasting, you know, twice as long or even longer than twice as long, that's very significant. And there's no way that variability in my driving accounts for a runtime that's twice as long. And lastly, this gets a little confusing here, but the red test, the red text is from my second grass test. So out here I ran RC Power, Saipom, and SMC. These were the times, as you see again, they're longer. Um, this is the estimated time comparing to the first row here. And these were the times I tested uh, out on my second test. The last time here, all that is is how much longer it ran after I reset the ESC, mirroring what I did on the earlier test. And it was only two seconds. And the reason for that is because there's virtually no voltage sag. So when it says it's dead, or when it's running low on voltage, it's low, you don't wanna keep running it because you might actually draw it down below 
a voltage that a LiPo should be run at. So one thing you should be careful about with the SMC is that it uh, performs great, but don't push it because once it's dead, it's dead. I need to go ahead and wrap this video up. It's been a long one, but let me know, which one would you pick? Which of these batteries do you think won overall? And uh, I may be testing another battery here in a not too distant future. RCBattery.com has a series called Luperior and they're highly rated, looked really promising. Would really like to test one of those and see how it compares. It's definitely gonna be up against some stiff competition, but it may do really well, uh, like the SIPOM and SMC. Please like this video and subscribe and uh, leave some comments. I always like to interact with my viewers. Take care, guys.